Welcome back to Legion 101. This time we're gonna begin to discuss the best way to position your units. After we are done with the basic knowledge, I will even tell you about some more advanced techniques. Before we begin, following information. In Legion there's a bunch of specific vocabulary like in any other video game. Some of those words will be explained in the video. Others will be displayed in the top left corner. Those words will be defined in the video description. Regarding this, I would always recommend to use those expressions even if you are playing or writing in another language. But now, back to our topic. Talking about positioning, it is very important to know the characteristics about the units you're playing. One way to do so is by playing each legion in bot or classic games till you mastered every of them. Another option to gain information is by using the codex, the in-game library of LTD2. You can open the codex by clicking on the book icon in the lobby and then selecting codex. It is also possible to open it in-game by selecting any unit and then simply clicking on the fighter's icon. The codex stores a lot of useful information about units, king, legion spells and other topics. As soon as we reach those, we're gonna come back. Let's take Nightmare as an example to see all the informations you can get here. After a short description, you can see the upgrade or the unit it did upgrade from. Health, DPS and damage show a short overview and where to position your units. Especially comparing HP per gold and DPS per gold with other units, you get an even deeper knowledge. Closing the codex part with the last three information you should use. Range, attack type and defensive type. On your lane, high DPS units should be positioned as close to the wall as possible. This improves their pathing, which is the movement on the lane. High DPS and carry units, such as Doppelganger, Kingpin, Fatalizer, Lioness and others, work best like this. For example, we want our Nightmare and later Doppelganger to live as long as possible to deal the most damage it can. By placing it close to the wall and following the next tricks, that can be guaranteed. Other to DPS units, Tanks do not only have to be close to the wall. You can place them a little more spread, but usually want them to be in the front of your damage dealers. Giving time to both ranged and melee damage units, tanks fulfill their job in the best possible way. Off tanks describe units that you want to deal a decent amount of damage and take a little in the same time. Place them between the wall and the front row to fulfill their job. As I already mentioned, ranged units should usually stand behind the tanks. There's no specific order whether they have to stand directly at the wall or a little bit away from this since they have a longer range and won't get sniped like this easily. More about ranged units and their perfect positioning in an advanced positioning video. One of the most important aspects of positioning is the so-called splitting. Splitting describes the following way of manipulating the waves to your advantage. On one side, most of the times it's the left one, you place all your DPS and other damage units. Those will be protected by the majority of your tanks. On the other side of your lane, you place a bunch of lower tier units and tanks. Doing so, you will have the following benefits. First, your main fighters only have to deal with a part of the wave, which is better to focus down specific targets and save a lot of health points. Second, you give your fighters extra time by the way the other part of the wave has to travel. This increases your damage output even more. And last, in advanced levels you can even snipe specific mercenaries to your advantage. So very important, splitting can be the deciding factor whether you win or lose a game. Whenever you build AOE units, 
units that hit multiple targets at once, splitting is not recommanded. If you want to learn more about how to split properly, go check out my guide linked in the description. Very helpful for everybody who wants to climb fast. The longer a game goes, the more units and especially tanks will be placed. Adding them to your build, you want them to end up in a V formation. This again has various reasons. The V formation will help your DPS units once again with the best possible pathing. Now they will be able to run down all the wave creatures in a half circle. On top of that, it helps your setup to survive longer. Compared to other positioning, fighters won't get killed once after another, but the wave will spread on numerous units and let them survive longer. All this leads to better holds and helps to gain some more workers with your spare gold. The best way to boost your fighters are auras. Those will be either granted by units passives or after picking a legion spell. More about legion spells another time. An aura unit can buff up to 7 units including itself. Yellow shining light is showing where you can place the units that will be granted the specific buff. Using a hexagon formation around such a unit you can gain the most bonuses for your team. As shown, you can build such a hexagon in two different ways. Personally, I only recommend the option with a single unit on top, for a very simple reason. If you followed all my other tips and tricks, you now see that you can perfectly fit auras into the V formation, like you see here. On top, your DPS unit will be granted above, like this you have the best possible positioning and a lot of buffs used. You can only apply one buff of the same aura on each unit. This rule stands for any aura besides the Leviathan that can buff up to two times. Finally, keep in mind that upgraded auras are not the same and can be stacked with a base unit's aura. You can always have a look at the names of the auras and if the names are different, they will stack. That's it for this week. I hope you enjoyed it and learned a lot. See you next time and good luck in your games.